it. Alright, so here we are in Adobe After Effects and if you want to follow this tutorial you will need the plugin called Trapcode Mirror. This is for the background. If you do buy the project file you don't need any plugins. It's made so that you can use it without any plugins. But let's get started for those that do have the plugin. So we'll go to composition, new composition, well, actually right here, uh, new project. Composition, new composition, I'll make this full HD, uh, so that's 1920 by 1080, 30 frames, 300 frames, which means 10 seconds long. And I will rename this to main comp. And then I will just make a background color of black and click OK and OK. Right away I will right click new and add a new solid layer and I will call this mirror. And this is going to be our background. So I'm going to effect trap code, mirror, right here. And right away I see something like this. We'll go into the geometry tab and I will just enlarge in this right here to so the size in X and the size in Y like so. Then I will immediately go to the shader and change the density to flat. So now you won't see anything because there is no light applied to your scene and you actually need a light to actually see your flatness right here. So we're going new light and we're going to make this a point light make it a well let's go for a white color or you can go into the blue and just make it a touch blue like so so it's not completely white and make it around 60 percent in intensity and click ok let's see what that does to our scene okay so we have something like this this looks pretty cool i will keep it as it is right now so we'll see where we'll get at uh, in the future um so we're going back to mirror and let's see what we can change as well so right here we see the vertices currently set at 50 let's change one to 10 and one to eight so we get something more like this, maybe even lower seven and four. And now we get something like this. All right, so this looks better. I'm going into my fractal here. And right here, I will go to the amplitude and increase that. So my peaks are coming out a little bit better. In the shader tab, I want to change a few other things. Currently, we have like a lot of shininess and I don't really want to have this peculiar right here. So it's actually not in the shader, it's in the material right here. And here we can pick a color. I will go into the color tab and pick a nice dark blue color somewhere around here and click OK. Then I will go into the speckler, remove the speckler a bit right here. Shininess, uh, we can lower this down and we get something more like this. You can also play with light, position the light, click on the light and position it more to the left so we get it around here. And then we can hold control and press D on the keyboard to duplicate our light and maybe move one over here so we don't have any, any like dark spots. And then we can go into layers, light settings, just change the intensity to something like 30 so it's a little bit less intense right over here. We'll also go into my project manager and click over here and change this to 32 bits per channel so we have a little bit more color to work with. Go back to the effects controls for the mirror and maybe make it just a touch darker in the material right around here. I like this one. I'll click OK and now we'll select everything right here. Go to layer pre-compose and rename this to background mirror and click OK. If we go in our background mirror right here, let's see what we can do as well. At the fall off, I will change this to smooth and increase the radius. And then I will apply an effect called noise and grain and add some noise at the end of it and just hit 1%. So that's going to solve a little bit of the like color shifts that you're going to see in your background. If you add a little bit of noise, that's going to solve that problem. Go back to the main comp and duplicate your background mirror. I'm going to change my mode to additive. Well, actually, before I do that, click on the background and add find edges. Search for it in the effects and presets and then invert the mask right here. You will see some of these lines right here and I know you can do lines in mirror but I want imperfect lines on like so and these are giving me better results in my opinion so I'll change the blending mode to add and now we're going to get these nice highlights on our yeah on our background so this is looking better I kind of like this result so we, what we can do as well is go to effect blur and add a bit of Gaussian blur and increase it to something like 3% or maybe even 5% and then go back effects color correction curves and now we can increase our curves and that's going to make um, our whites become brighter and of course you can add some contrast to ensure that it's not passing anything else um, but now we get something more like this and actually I will return my blur to something like 3 um, but now you can see that we have something like this of course if you're going to duplicate that you're going to get better results at this Okay, so this is looking pretty cool. If you want to do this in mirror, you can go back to the background mirror and duplicate this solid layer. 
And for those that don't know, if you go to the shader option right here, you can draw right here, currently set at fill, you can go wireframe, and then you're going to see a wireframe. Of course, you have to change your colors, you can add something like a generate fill. And then you can color these lines right here so you get something like this. Um, and actually this is also covering something that some people were asking me for the other tutorial on how to create a low polygon background style. And this is how I add the lines. You can also go here in the wireframe and change this to points and then you will have the points right here. Of course you have to increase the size but you can, yeah, you get the idea right here. Okay, so I'm going to uh, currently delete this solid layer. Also something that I forgot to mention, if you click on mirror and you go back to the fractal, you can also increase the amplitude in X and Y and this is also going to like make it a little bit more random, like more organic I, I suppose. So we're going to get something like this and this is looking a lot better. 400, 200 and 200 right here. Okay, there we go. And I'm going to hold alt and click on the evolution and just enter something like time times 50. And if we're going to preview this, we're going to get a nice animation in our background like so. And I think this is a little bit too much. So I'm going to set this back to five. So we have a slow animation and set the complexity at one. And that's also going to help with the animation to make it very smooth. Okay, so five is of course way too low. So I'm going to set this at 15 and let's see what this is going to give us. And of course you can set this at whatever you want. So I think that 15 actually looks good. You see the animation, um, it's kind of obvious, but it's still very subtle. So that's what I actually look after. Go back to your main comp and you can see your lines like so looking pretty cool. Now we can continue with the rest of the tutorial. I'm going to import my logo right here. I will click import and editable layer styles. I know that I import a composition. I'm just going to hold my one layer because that's actually my logo. I'm going to rename, well actually I don't need to rename this composition, it says logo, so that's okay. We'll go back to my main composition and just add my logo to my, yeah, my layer right here. I can duplicate it immediately and just uncheck one of these and I can combine this with the parent tool to one of this. So if I move this around, the other one is also going to be in the same exact spot, so that's why I'm doing this. Of course, I'm going to center it for now and I will make it smaller like so, so it's nicely in composite. 70 okay something like this click on the logo go to effects generate gradient ramp right here and we'll set this at a nice light gray color and this at a dark gray color so we get something like so and then we'll go to effects perspective and i will add bevel alpha right here we get this nice 3d look i will set this at two and this one at maybe a little bit lower and just change the color to something warmer like so or actually maybe go for blue tones and maybe increase the thickness a little bit more to something like four more uh, like so and maybe increase the intensity a little bit more so we can see the result itself this is looking better of course you can manipulate the light angle as well but i think this looks fine looking cool. Um, I will also go back to my color right here and maybe add a little bit of color in the blue channel right here so we get a little bit more life to our scene. This might be a little bit too much but let's see what we can do with it. I think the top blue is actually a little bit too cyan so more towards these colors. Okay so this is looking better. Now I will go and search for light sweep so search light sweep CC light sweep and apply this to the logo and now we get this nice like light going on here. We can change the color as well. Maybe make it a little bit more orange. Click OK and change the intensity right here. And the width. You can play around with these two. Maybe I will change this to more a blue color. Like so. And now we can actually animate this and this is going to like be a bevel that's coming over our logo. So I will put this right here and click on the stopwatch for the center. And then like at 150. I will move this to the other side. So now it's actually animating. Actually, at the beginning it can already be in frame a little bit, so it's going to animate itself over time, like so. Of course, you can go more into detail in your logo and really make it look metal-y. Um, you can apply another light sweep, for example, and just use this one as a static color shift. So we can position one over here, rotate it like so, make it wide enough. And now it's going to look more like, yeah, kind of a metal look. Looking great. All right, so we have our logo here centered and animating. 
with some kind of light sweep passing through. Once we have that, we can actually add our text. So go to the text tool and just enter your name. All right. And reposition this in the center and right here and just make it in a position that actually looks nice in the comparison with your logo. Of course, it's going to look like it's not centered in the complete aspect, but that's something that we're going to change afterwards. Bind your text to the first logo right here. And now it's also going to follow the position of that logo. We can now go press T on the keyboard and set the opacity for the text to zero. Now we want to animate something like it's actually from zooming in, it's going to zoom out and right here at 150 we want to move up this logo, press P on the keyboard, click on the stopwatch, move like 20 frames, so hold shift and press the page down twice, that's going to jump 10, uh, well 20 frames in your timeline right here and now I will animate this upwards like so and then I will also click on the stopwatch for the opacity for my text right here and position the first keyframe at the same start of this keyframe and then set it at 100. And now you can see visually where you have to put your logo and text so it's actually centered in your composition, something like this. Now we have our logo, it's animating and while it's animating up our text appears like so. Of course right here we want to shift our metal metallic look logo to a flat white logo. So what we will do is also press T on the keyboard for those two logo compositions. Press T, create a new keyframe. And right here I will reveal this one but set the opacity also at zero. And then right here set the opacity for the metal logo to zero and 100 for the white flat logo. So now it's making this transition to become a nice flat logo. Same goes for the background. We want to set it from 100 to zero. So I'm going to copy these keyframes as they do that and just paste them to my background layer like so. Create a new background solid and rename this background and just make sure that this has the color that you want to add to it. So maybe a very dark blue gray color right here. I don't really prefer to use black so I'll use this one put this below and then if we animate it up we're going to get our background and with a flat logo right here so now we have something like this okay so you can see that the animation is going pretty harsh I will select all my layers press U on the keyboard and press U again until you see all your keyframes right here and what I will do is select all of these keyframes except for this one so hold shift and click on it again to unselect it and I will go right click keyframe assistance easy ease and that's going to make them smoother animated so click on the graph editor and make sure you have your edit speed graph and right here I will select this one here and just drag this in and this one as well and now it's going from slow to fast slow again so now it's going to give you a nice smooth animation right here So you can see that it's, it's looking better. Of course, you can select all your last keyframes right here and offset them if you want it to take longer. Okay, pretty cool. And now what I will do is actually add a new adjustment layer. And we're going to rename this to transform control and add the effect called transform. And we're going to apply this to our scene and go to this position right here where our logo actually goes up. So at the beginning of our animation and click on the keyframe for scale. Go to the beginning of your timeline and zoom in like so. Right here I will also click on my first logo. I think that's this one. Okay. So we're going to rename this to metal logo. And press T on the keyboard with your background selected as well. So I'm holding control to select multiple layers. Press T on the keyboard. Uh, so we have our opacity keyframes and go a few frames forward so 25 is averagely a second click to create new keyframes go to the beginning and set this at zero so we have a nice fade in of our logo and then it's zooming out and right here it's moving up go back to the transform control and press U on the keyboard so we see our keyframes right here select both of these right click keyframe assistance easy ease and again do the same thing with the graph editor we can slow it down at the end right here and I'm going to drag this one in so it's actually animating fast and slowing down along the way 
this looks fine maybe you can animate this keyframe a little bit sooner so it's actually animating faster right here you want to do the animation so we can drag over these keyframes right here and then we have the animation of everything moving up uh, of course you have to make sure that all of your keyframes are repositioned okay and this should work so now it's zoom okay there we go fading in and going to the top great so now we have this as a transition i will add another i will actually first close everything down create a new adjustment layer color control and right here i will add a bit of a uh, color variation so color correction curves we can add a little bit more contrast right here maybe add a bit of blues like so and take away a bit of red so your blue becomes more sane Go back to the blue and just don't exaggerate things. Go back to RGB a little bit less. And now we get something like this that's going to affect our overall composition like so. I also want to create a new adjustment layer and rename this to Glow. And I'm going to apply the perfect glow right here. Uh, you can download this at freebies at our website. A link will also be in the description to our website. This is going to get you better results for Glow like so. You can see that this is actually looking great. Uh, so right here. I'm going to have this glow at the point that it's actually transitioning I want it to actually shine and go on so right here we'll set a keyframe for the intensity press U on the keyboard and right here I want it to be zero and right here I just want it to be lower so I'm going to hold ctrl and drag to the left until I have something that I kind of like. I'm also going to create a keyframe for the threshold, press U on the keyboard and put that right here. And I'm going to um, increase the threshold as well. So now we have a nice glow inner metallic logo like so. It's shining, transitioning into our regular logo right here looking great and then one thing that I will do that you might not be able to but I will import one of my light leaks right here from the fashion series um, you can also get some at the freebies page of our website but if you want more variation you can buy the entire pack with over 100 elements and then find something that you like and that's going to help give some life to your scene I think I'm going to use this one import this video and put it on top of everything change the blending mode to add and now we're going to get this nice like intro animation our logo is right here and actually I'm going to cut this up so right here I like the part from this part with well actually it's a little bit sooner I think it's after this yeah this one I like this part so I'm going to hold shift control and press D on the keyboard to split it I'm going to move this one over and put this one at the beginning so now it's starting like so we have our logo not too much and then right here we have it doing once more this animation you can also click over here press T on the keyboard and like fade it out a little bit like so and we are getting something like this and now we have our final logo looking great and then finally you can add a new adjustment layer rename this to vignette and put it on top of everything and just go to effects color correction curves lower the curves like so go to your ellipse tool double click on the ellipse tool and subtract the mask right here press f on the keyboard and feather your mask and you're going to get a nice vignette like this and this is going to allow you to focus to middle so right here without and with and i think this really adds up in your scene you can also put this below your fashion or actually i'm going to keep it on top so everything is actually popping it and right here in the background as well it's looking a lot better as well all right so that's basically how to create that intro if you have enjoyed this tutorial give it a like and also subscribe to the channel for more thank you so much for watching and goodbye <laughs>